welcome to Mel and Peter. Yeah. I think maybe for you, Peter, uh, hopefully this one will work. Okay. Uh, okay, so I will say uh, I am uh, the official uh, of the European Parliament, which has been, uh, which is responsible for this study, uh, and I will just present the context in which it has been initiated uh, and what uh, our MEPS uh, wanted to obtain out of this study. So, of course, this study uh, on mass surveillance of IT users was launched in 2014, uh, and uh, during the revelations of uh, Mr. Snowden, and. Uh, what did our MEPS wanted uh, to, to find out with this study? I guess uh, the first question they asked uh, us is, you know, is it technically and uh, scientifically uh, valid? Are all these allegations made in the press, uh, do, are they, you know, uh, do they have a, a technical and scientific credibility? So this is the first thing we did, and of course, we confirmed it. The second point uh, they wanted to know is, is it a matter of technology? Uh, can we improve the privacy of... Uh, EU citizen? Is it just a matter of throwing technology on the floor? Uh, we, is it a matter of installing additional apps on your smartphone, additional applications on your PC, or, uh, subscribing to uh, specialized services such as store, etc., etc., etc.? And the answer was no. No, it's not only a matter of technology. Why? Because anyway, what's available up there is uh, too complex for the majority of users. So you cannot ensure mass adoption with these tools. And two, even if you do, the, you're part of the happy few who use those tools. Um, the point is that you have no assurance, you have no insurance. Uh, how do you know that this is not a vector, not another vector of mass surveillance? So there's an issue of trust over there. So very well. Then the third point is uh, was to look at what are the options, you know, to ensure mass adoption, to ensure that uh, uh, the internet becomes better, uh, more secure, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then, of course, we go back to the big players, the Facebook, the Google, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But problem is that they are part of the problem as well because they are under pressure of the of the of of, of the governments uh, of the national security agencies. So how do you solve this? And this is where we came to the obvious that the only way to you cannot use technology only. You need proper re regulation. You need proper regulation uh, because res security is also goes together with responsibility, and responsibility implies, unfortunately, regulation. And once you touch regulation, you, 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 you deal with many, many different political aspects. So um, uh, the, this, the, the, the key things which are, and I will stop here, I will put the microphone to my colleague, but the key things which are really uh, being followed up now is regulations on backdoor. Do we need to regulate uh, regulation on backdoors? If we don't want to regulate encryptions, maybe we should regulate backdoors. Uh, this is uh, extremely important. This part of the things which are being actively followed up. Uh, the use of open sources, of course, in public institutions, and another, a, a lot of uh, very hot subjects uh, which are actually being debated in the European Parliament uh, at the moment. Thank you. So I'd uh, like to go into some details on, uh, on the study that uh, we conducted for, uh, for the European uh, Parliament. Um, unfortunately, it's a, it's a bit much. It's a very broad study, so uh, I would probably advise you to uh, to delve into it uh, at your own leisure. But uh, <laughs> uh, mainly, uh, the thing that we uh, did last year um, is actually very analog to the questions we're discussing uh, today. Um, although we did frame it in the sense that uh, um, we wanted to strike and to see what the balance was between uh, privacy and security. Well, as we've seen today, we're also discussing the ways in which uh, uh, in which there can be a, a trade-off between uh, the two. I mean, it might not be uh, the best way to uh, to oppose them or make it a, a zero-sum game. Um, the the second uh, thing is um, how to. Uh, uh, reduce the risk of massive surveillance on citizens. So the perspective that we took in our study was mainly uh, uh, on uh, on citizens. So we did go a bit broader than the scope of what we're discussing today. Uh, obviously, looking at the, the key players in a, in a European context uh, is extremely important, which means both looking at uh, uh, industries where things are happening and maybe even individual uh, companies that are uh, progressing uh, what uh, 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 good options for uh, 
for what we can uh, achieve uh, uh, and uh, which can help uh, actually policy move forward as well. I mean, technology in some ways can be leading for, uh, uh, for policy innovation, I think. And uh, obviously in the end then uh, that does lead to which policy options we would suggest. I think it's, it's important that uh, we chose uh, uh, conceptually to go uh, very broad actually, not define which agency or which uh, institution should be uh, responsible for, uh, uh, for uh, proposing which policy option, but mainly focusing on, okay, so if we look at the broader European context, and the palette of options available, which ones show the most promise and which one will uh, go forward the most. Um, so uh, I won't go <laughs> too deep into this one. As you can tell, there's a, there's a lot of text here. But uh, I think the, the, the main important thing is that uh, we focused on uh, technology in initiatives to redesign the internet. Um, so that means that, uh, um, well, we've tried to look into all sorts of different uh, uh, initiatives, not specifically European-based. I mean, there's a lot of European innovation, uh, but also a lot of uh, uh, US-based innovation going on. Uh, DARPA, for instance, uh, uh, EVAs to Defense, uh, uh, they, they are doing a lot of interesting stuff. Um, the second, uh, which was, uh, which proved to be quite controversial in, in what we were trying to do, was looking at whether or not uh, uh, a secure European internet subnet uh, would be uh, would be a feasible option. Well, I say con controversial. It was actually uh, well, uh, a lot of people were uh, were saying that this might not be the best route to go. But I think there are some interesting ideas in there about uh, ways in which you uh, try to. Uh, develop uh, uh, secure hardware and uh, uh, try to fence off certain uh, critical systems, as we were discussing earlier tomorrow. Um, well, the advantages and disadvantages of open source, I think, in our briefing papers for today as well, uh, and we'll probably get into this in, in some, uh, some panels as well. Um, um, the pros and cons, uh, I mean, you, you can uh, promote open source by just uh, um, uh, laying it out there as the end all, uh, but I think there's, uh, there's some weighing of, of options there as well. And uh, uh, the advantages and disadvantages of end-to-end -end encryption, which is actually the central question uh, in challenge A that was formulated here today. So we, uh, um, the way we operationalized this uh, was looking at uh, uh, 21 uh, subdomains in here and, uh, and delving into these questions uh, a bit deeper. Uh, but I'll skip those. Um, I think basically what we ended up doing, like I said, we, uh, uh, we wanted to sketch a broad palette of things that could be done and uh, hopefully will be picked up by, uh, by, uh, by some European institutions. We're having uh, interesting discussions already uh, with a lot of people, but mainly, um, so if you look at uh, levels of innovation as we term them, I mean, this is a obviously a a bit arbitrary, uh, uh, the way we frame this, but um, basically it depends on how far we're willing to go, which is uh, the axis on the, on the left side here. I mean, are we just willing to uh, promote and finance certain initiatives, or are we willing to actually go and uh, regulate certain things uh, in a European context, or, or even uh, execute things uh, uh, as, uh, as Europe? Uh, be, be the actual uh, institution that, uh, that does these kinds of things. And then uh, um, the axis on the left is just mainly, so do we take the as-is state of what, uh, uh, what, what technology has to offer and do we try to improve on that in order to make it more secure, or do we actually try and change the current state? And I think for, uh, for an audience such as yourself, I don't have to go too much into um, the actual uh, options that are here on the table, I mean, certification is going to be discussed extensively, um, uh, looking at certain baselines, uh, promoting encryption, things like that. I mean, there's a, there's a broad range of choices, I think, for, uh, for policymakers and for, uh, for thinkers on this subject to choose from, which I hope we, uh, we can <coughs> discuss today, but I think it's important to sketch out that this, this was the palette that we were 
focusing on. Um, and since we're trying to make up some time, uh, I, uh, I decided to move straight on to, uh, to the final thoughts. Um, also, if I, if I look at uh, um, the way in which uh, uh, we're framing discussions today, like we said earlier, I mean, we're already talking about uh, AI, artificial intelligence, as being uh, one of the uh, one of the ways in which uh, uh, our discussion about uh, security and safety is progressing, um, I think basically like the 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 options that we're already should be discussing today is how the Internet of Things could be uh, integrated more securely. I mean, there's uh, we're we're uh, we're really already in that age right now, and there's not too much discussion or thinking going into how that should actually be made more secure. So I'm, I'm interested in the discussions about artificial intelligence, but I think we have to focus as well on the huge gaps that we have uh, today. Um, well, the, the funding of initiatives, one of the initiatives that we, uh, that we, um, that we propose in the plan uh, or that we look at in the plan is uh, in our report is looking at the ways in which um, in which open source initiatives can be uh, funded. Well, as we saw in the in the in the aftermath of Heartbleed, there's some initiatives now to make funding available for those. So there's some promise in in what's going on over there. Um, uh, we can see now as well, also in in law enforcement cycles, some admission that uh, Snowden might actually uh, be onto something uh, with his uh, revelations. There's uh, there's some changes being made now in the practices of, uh, of surveillance and of, uh, uh, of the way that law enforcement is operating. Um, well, like I said, the Internet of Things and big data is becoming for the forefront, I think, right now of, uh, um, of the way that we analyze uh, uh, the issues of freedom and safety. Um, so my basic message is that we need to have a political debate on uh, on the balance, there's actually, well, I'm trying to log roll already that there's going to be uh, uh, some more discussion on that uh, on the 8th and 9th of December, uh, looking at uh, protecting online privacy by enhancing IT security, which is also going to be hosted by the European Parliament. Um, so I would encourage uh, some of you to keep on discussing over there. And, um, and I just saw Mr. Schneier uh, entering here, actually. I, uh, I included this quote by him already uh, some time ago, actually, uh, in an earlier version of this one. But I thought, as an homage, I would uh, I would leave it in here. Um, I think we're discussing right now the ways in which uh, in which surveillance is impacting, uh, mainly state-sponsored surveillance is impacting on uh, on what uh, we're doing. But uh, the obvious uh, thing to worry about is uh, what companies are actually doing with our data, because they're uh, I mean. It's uh, the justification is basically in uh, uh, in uh, calling it marketing and then uh, looking at everything that we do. So uh, hopefully uh, I've given some uh, some inroads in the discussions that we are going to have today, and uh, I'm looking forward to discussing it further with you.